GM GM Web3 Builders Alliance here, Jeff or Jam Jeff. And wanted to take a few minutes and share a video about the process of building from a high level. One of the things we talk about an awful lot is the idea that writing the code itself is usually a ladder step in the process. So I wanted to go through a couple of slides and speak philosophically and high level to start and then get to somewhat of granularities. The building process in any realm can find patterns and process in the building of a home. So wherever you are in the world, anytime you have a home, you have some choices that you make. If you um, are fortunate enough to live in a place where you have such freedoms and choices. The beautiful thing about Web3 is you do have freedoms and choices. So the first thing we wanna talk about is finding your community. Uh, people talk about a community or the community. You really want to focus on your community. People that you want to surround yourself with, that you are philosophically uh, aligned with. You have the same interests, similar beliefs. You can uh, exchange, interact, and debate with each other in a way that is productive rather than confrontational and negative. So the first thing you want to do is find your community. Across Web3, there are many excellent communities, communities that are blockchains, communities that are applications, communities that are verticals. So find your community when you determine where you want to build. The next step is you want to determine what you need to live. Uh, maybe that is certain architectures, certain economies, certain social mores and, and, and opportunities. So what do you need? And then for a house, you want to think about what do you need to live? Do you have a big family? Do you have a small family? Do you live in a place that's hot? Do you live in a place that's cold? These will be design features. Do you live in a place that one side would be facing the sun and the other would? Do you prefer a lot of light? Do you need shade? Do you need five bedrooms? Do you need one? Do you need a big yard or not? These are all design decisions in determining your needs. And you wanna ask yourself these questions. And going back to the first step, find your community. You also want to surround yourself with people that will ask you really good, hard questions in a way that brings out the best in you, not the confrontation in you. Then you want to make a blueprint. And a blueprint is just that. It is not cast in stone final product. It is just a plan. Because as you build, your blueprint will change. As you see, the physical manifestation of a two-dimensional drawing, you will make design changes for what is best for your needs. You being the user and the builder, your family or the people that are gonna inhabit this abode with you, these are your users. How do you best serve them? Then you wanna get your materials. This is a big piece that currently, as of June 10th, 2023, many of our cadets are working on now. This is research. This is look at successful projects that have great examples of solid code snippets. What pieces can we get from these code bases that we can now use in our build and gather them? annotate them, make notes on them. One of the things, if you go to a hardware store and you see big shelves of materials, a lot of them have annotations on them. So annotate what you get. Always keep notes that you can understand on what you gather. What does this do? Where might it fit? Then you start building and iterating. 
you may determine that you want certain windows and doors in certain places at the beginning of your build. And as you go, you may change your mind because of better opportunities for your users. I'm gonna go back to get your materials. Always, always, always get more than what you're going to need at the end. Always have more. You always wanna reach into your toolbox and have choices, not only one, and you have to just make it work. So when you get your materials, when you find those examples, when you build your pieces from scratch, never dump anything. Because what you may not use right now, you may find you can use later. You may want those double doors, then you decide you don't, don't throw those double doors out. Because at the end, you may say, I'm gonna build an extension here to create more benefits for my users, and I'm gonna need these double doors. So always have, we go back to the bottom there, a dumpster of unused materials. Looking at this visual, you can see what I mean. We draw a blueprint. This is your project. This is your protocol. These are your contracts, your front end, your back end, all of the pieces. You have your tools. You may not use them all this project, but you want to have plenty. You don't want to ever have to reach and not have what you need. Then you start building. And as you go and you see what it looks like, you're going to want to make changes. And that's okay. You want to make sure that it's tight and secure. And nothing can get in that you don't want, and nothing can be taken out that you don't want to lose. And at the end of the process, there's going to be a dumpster, a dumpster full of stuff you don't use. Don't get rid of it. That is repurposed material. Because again, whether it's this project, a future project, an addition to this project, featuring this one out, featuring a future one out. You want to always have stuff that you've built that you can go back to and use. Finally, let's make some connections here. The community that we have chosen is Solana. They are our people. We like working with them. They think like us in certain ways. And it gives us the kind of vibe that this is where we want to live. The neighborhood we choose is a vertical. Maybe it's an NFT neighborhood. Maybe it's a DAO neighborhood, DeFi neighborhood, what have you. The needs are our user story. What do our users need to live in this community, in this neighborhood? What can we build for them that gives them utility, comfort, security? The blueprint is your diagram, your workflow. What does it look like? Again, knowing that this is theoretically and metaphorically in pencil, these things can move around as long as we maintain usability and security. Your code is the materials. These are the building blocks. They need to be tight, secure, of high quality, and they need to go together in a way that once again provides the user with what he or she needs and the safety and security of existing there. Another part is the inspection. Once the physical house, <coughs> excuse me, the physical house is built, you will have professionals come in and inspect to make sure that the house is doing what it's meant to do and only that. And it's a safe, secure environment. This is testing and auditing. And then the last thing is we go live just as much as we go live in. When we move in, we go live. And so thinking about this metaphor, hopefully this gives you a little bit of perspective of process. You could see where in the process the code is. It's after a little bit. And it's closer to going live than it is to 
finding your neighborhood, and determining user story. Hopefully this process and description is giving you a little bit of perspective on the building experience. All the best, and we're always here for you.